What's going on, animators? Aaron here from CG Riff, and we're so excited to have all of you joining us for episode eight of our CG Riff animation podcast. And you guys are in for a treat because uh, we have an incredible guest today. Uh, none other than Brenda Chapman is joining us today, and we're so excited to get into it with her, hear all about her journey over, uh, it's been nearly 40 years in the, in the industry at this point, and spanning all the way back to, you know, films like Little Mermaid, uh, the Lion King, uh, Hunchback, uh, before going on to direct uh, films like The Prince of Egypt and Brave, uh, winning an Academy Award for Brave, of course. And uh, we're just so excited to hear about all the things she's been up to since then. Uh, she's had a lot of uh, knowledge and a lot of different hats that she's worn in her many years in the industry. And we're, we're just so excited to, to have you join us here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time uh, and glad to have you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. So uh, let's let's get right into it. Um, we like to start at the at the very beginning. Take us back. Growing up, uh, when did you know that you wanted to be involved with the animation industry? What drew you to wanting to do, uh, you know, to make films as as a career? Well, I didn't realize I was going to make films as a career. I just wanted a job that I could draw, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I watched cartoons growing up. Saturday morning after school, all of that good stuff. Uh, Bugs Bunny, Tux Avery. Um, Johnny Quest, <laughs> all of that kind of thing, and then seeing the Disney stuff in the theaters. But uh, I think I didn't realize that people actually made uh, animated films. I just thought they existed, you know, <laughs> for a long, long time. So I saw um, a film when I was in high school that I accidentally stayed and watched the credits and then it hit me. It was like, oh, people work on these things. So that's pretty much when I thought, okay, I'm going to look into this and uh, let's see what I can, see if I can get in there. <laughs> awesome. So growing up, you, you just liked to draw. You had already, you know, already had a penchant for that. Did, were there artists in your family or is it something that was kind of encouraged in some terms of pursuing that as, as a you know career path well, once you yeah. kind of made that yeah. connection? Yeah. Um, my mom was very encouraging. Uh, kind of given her little backstory, uh, she she uh, was raised by her grandparents and was sort of a frustrated artist. She thought she was really good and um, always wanted to be an artist, but uh, it, she grew up during the Depression and um, her grandfather thought it was a waste of time to educate a woman, so she went to a one-room schoolhouse. There was a, there was a school teacher in one of those uh, at the school one time that walked her home after school and asked if she could give her art classes afterwards because she recognized my mom's talent. And um, my grandfather just said, don't be putting ideas in my, my granddaughter's head. It was southern Illinois. It was really country bumpkin area kind of a thing But um, at that time. And uh, he, uh, he was on that school board, and that teacher got fired you know, didn't get to come back the next year. So my mom always remembered that and always felt bad. So when she saw that I loved to draw and had a had a interest in it, she really encouraged it. And so one of the things she would do with me, which I am very grateful for, and I uh, attribute my imagination a lot to it, is we'd play that scribble game where she'd make a little scribble on the paper and say, make something out of it. So I'd draw a flower or an elephant or whatever, you know, and then I'd do the same for her and watch her create these beautiful images out of it. So it was just really encouraging. And I, I even played that with my daughter and little kids over the years and, and grownups sometimes. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, that's that's great that you you uh, your imagination was encouraged in that way, and 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 uh, you know, kind of creativity uh, flourished, and, and you know, from a place where it was you know had maybe been stifled before that. Yeah. So, so how do, how do you then find your way, uh, you know, into art, uh, you know, your education path? You, you did you go straight to Cal Arts, or or what was your your path um, uh, into studying this? Um, well, you know, when I went to school way pre-internet so there was no way to there was nothing really i grew up in a really tiny town in central illinois about 150 people and then i was bused into a high school 10 miles away and they they had a library and everything but just nothing on animation so i did i wasn't really aware of it um but but so i just was i just kept pursuing art you know any kind of art painting drawing um that that kind of approach and um I went to the local community college and took all the requirements needed, but just kept taking all of their art classes. And then um, 
and then I, uh, you know, I just was trying to figure out the the counselors there weren't sure how to get me into an a animation thing. So, um, turns out my sister was working with this woman who had a cousin who worked for Disney in the live action department, <laughs> and so he agreed to talk to me on the phone, and I spoke with him, and then he uh, got the address of the animation studio and um, the assistant to uh, the guy who was uh, sort of the not the CEO at the time, uh, Ed Hansen, he sort of ran the department. And um, so I ended up calling her, or no, I wrote to her, and uh, she wrote me back and sent me a pamphlet for CalArts, and that's how I discovered CalArts. And then I put together a portfolio based on this little pamphlet, sent it in, and got rejected the first time. <laughs> So, oh. <laughs> so uh, I went back to uh, the community college, which I'd already graduated from, and worked with another art teacher that they had. It was a new head art teacher, and he worked really hard with me for a year, and uh, and then I put my portfolio in and got in the second time. So, so what was that like coming from such a tiny town, and then you're you're out in California oh. at, at this you know great kind of crazy art school? Like, what what was okay. that uh, <laughs> transition like for that you? Was is that like a huge oh, culture huge. shock? Absolutely huge. I mean, I went to a little town that had a little church in it that you went to every Sunday and went to <laughs> Sunday school. It was very naive and very sheltered and, and all of that. And then I get there and uh, I still remember I have a brother who's much older than me who lived in San Diego at the time. He's 21 years older than me. So he helped. I drove out there stayed with him and then he took me up to CalArts and everybody thought he was my dad. But he had a uh, my niece with us and so we were moving in <laughs> slowly but surely and my niece just disappeared and I was like where's Lisa I couldn't find her and then we brought the rest of my stuff in and she was behind the drapes in my my dorm room staring out at the pool which was clothing optional <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was, I was like oh my god <laughs> my little 10 year old niece freaking you know <laughs> so that was an interesting uh uh, introduction, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I just went with it. It's like, I knew it was going to be different. So, uh, so I had a, I had a, it was, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, partying going on in a big way <laughs> there, yeah. um, which I was just on the periphery of, I was, I was very, uh, careful with all that stuff. So it was fun to watch. <laughs> Okay. So, so what types of, uh, classes in, in terms of the curriculum there, did you find yourself kind of drawn to, like, did you know right away that you wanted to do storyboarding or, or was it animation that you were kind of focused on or, or a little bit of Back everything? Back in that day, the, uh, the limelight was always on the animator. So everybody who showed up at CalArts wanted to be an animator. I don't think there were very many who even knew that there were other aspects to it. Um, and so, uh, it took me a while to figure it out. I mean, animation was really hard for me. I, I didn't, I realized you get to a place like CalArts and you realize suddenly you're not the best in your class anymore. You know, there are a lot of people who are really good. And uh, I just, my draftsmanship wasn't quite what some of the others were and, and animation was really uh, kind of tedious, the tedious part of it. But I did love the puzzle of putting the stories together and I, I always like to think outside the box a little bit. You know, I was back then, all the films were kind of gag films and always funny. And, and that's what I tried to do my first year. I did this quirky little film. I don't think it was very funny. I thought it was kind of weird. But <laughs> when I look at it now, I go, whoa. Um, or it was too sweet. You know, my second year film was very earnest. But my third year film, um, I just really dug deep and I did a an emotional little film before there were a whole bunch of emotional films but uh, it was about an old lady who was alone on her birthday and that got the notice of Ron and John um, of mermaid fame <laughs> um, when I put it in my portfolio um, and it was in the producers show and uh, it just it I just sort of stood out in that way because I had a very different kind of story um, to tell. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> and, and what, 
fortuitous and, and uh, incredible timing, um, uh, you know, getting coming <laughs> just as Disney's kind of making that turn and, and coming, you know, into their, I guess, second golden age to to get in there and catch the, the eyes of those guys who would go on, you know, to, to direct so many uh, of the films that saved my childhood, at least. Um, th- that's a. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Coming, you know, like you say, coming from a tiny town and then, and then kind of sort of finding your, your voice. Um, and, and then, you know, f- finding what was, was, uh, really going to resonate, um, you know, felt true to you and, and then, you know, catching their eyes in that way is really, really inspiring. Um, okay. So then you, so your first job is, is Disney or were you already, had you already kind of done some, I guess, uh, uh no. other stuff prior well, to that? I, I had to put myself through school. My parents, um, my dad had died, um, before I left for Cal Arts, and we just didn't have much money, so um, uh, so I had to find a job after my first year at school. I, I worked work study while I was at school. I did little jobs and try to make money. But um, so my first job was for Deke D I C, um, doing uh, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, <laughs> um, oh, <nice. laughs> and I was the hero of all the little kids back in my hometown because <laughs> I would send them model sheets. <laughs> they, 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 they love that. Um, but uh, the cool thing about that was after I spent a couple of months in the summer working on that, um, <laughs> they uh, had mostly designers and, and um, storyboard artists working on the shows. And they didn't have many people who had actually animated. And I'd the first time I worked there, I'd only animated my first year film, which was a silent film. But um, at CalArts, it, they were just pencil tests, and you didn't work with sound the first year. Uh, and so they uh, they approached me and said, "Well, you've animated, so you know, would you be interested in going to Tokyo to check lip sync on the <laughs> on the uh, animation over there because most of the Japanese animators didn't speak English?" And so, so I don't know what I was thinking, but I said, okay. <laughs> I thought, oh, <laughs> they'll send me to Tokyo and I get to work and I get paid more and da da da. So, uh, so that's what I did. And luckily, um, the, it was filled with Canadians, uh, over there and, uh, <laughs> super nice guy, um, Woody Yoakum, um, took me under his wing and taught me everything I needed to know. So I was able to do the, the, the exposure sheets and figure out there were like six mouth shapes and they they lettered them a through f you know <laughs> so you you just picked out which one you thought would work with that uh that thing and then you would end up having to watch the films and just look at the mouths the whole time so when i got back from there that's all i could see on animated films was all the bad lip sync that was going on <laughs> so try to watch rudolph the red nosed reindeer and watch the lip sync <laughs> you'll go crazy <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, that sounds like an incredible experience for for uh, you know someone who's so young and, and you know just a freshman, I guess, in, in uh, at Cal Arts, uh to, to get to go overseas and do that is, is really yeah. uh, you know opens up I, the world I, uh, to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was. I still can't believe how fortunate I was to be at the right place at the right time. You know, it was just it was an yeah. amazing experience. That's cool. Okay, so so I guess you continue doing those types of things d- is, uh, during school, or you would go back and just do that just, in the summer, or how did that summer, how did that play I, out? I uh, would go back full okay. time to school and and still do the work study. Um, I was an RA and and all that, and then I would. Uh, oh, me too. <laughs> Where, did you go to yeah. LR? <laughs> no, no, I went to okay. SCAD, but I, I meet a lot of uh, uh, animators that are that are yeah. RAs. That something about yeah, the other personality. Yeah, I don't know. Responsible. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I did it um, two years in a row, um, spent about three months each over in Tokyo, and then I came back and uh, uh, finished up CalArts. And then uh, and then when I graduated after my third year, I was um, offered um, to be a trainee in story at Disney. So I was very fortunate on that. Awesome. And so was Little Mermaid was your first uh, film you worked on over there? Yeah, or? yeah I uh, I. Very I cool. did um, some uh, short Mickey Mickey Mouse shorts, uh, just as the training program that they were still they were <clears throat> they're always trying to get the Mickey shorts out to see if they can you know modernize them or whatever they were doing that back then, <laughs> even now. Um, but uh, yeah, Little Mermaid was my first film, and then uh, and then because I didn't, I was able to 
do the boards and everything, but my, my drawing still was not the greatest. And I think because I was so nervous about being there, I got really stiff and, and everything and everything was overworked. And then for some reason they put me in cleanup thinking that would make my drawings better. It just made it stiffer, but, <laughs> but, but I got to work on Roger Rabbit because they put me in cleanup. Okay. Yeah. But then, um, I somehow managed to weasel my way back into story and, uh, uh, and just kept going. I, I just kept working on my drawing and got better. So, so could you tell at that time, like, like, I, I guess at a heart level or whatever, was there one of those that felt more right? Like when, when you were doing story, did that kind of speak more to your sensibilities uh, versus like, like you mentioned, obviously you were getting kind of stiff and a little sort of uh, overworking the drawings in terms of doing cleanup uh, or, you know, animation task. Um, do you think some part of you knew that story was kind of where you were, were meant to be, like more on that yeah, side? Yeah, I mean, I, I figured that out at CalArts uh, early on. That okay. story was where I was, where I could contribute the most. It just, that was just a better fit for me. And so, you know, trying, with the encouragement of the mentors that I had there at Disney, they were just a bunch of great, amazing, talented artists that were, I was very fortunate on that too. I, I didn't feel, I was in a really kind of amazing bubble as far as not feeling like I was being discriminated against because I was a woman. They, they were very um, inclusive and encouraging and um, Roger Allers, Ed Gombert, Gary Trousdale, um, Ron and John were great and uh, Mike Gabriel. All these guys were were fantastic and just helped me get better. Glenn Keane, you know, he, if I was working on a scene that he was going to be touching, he would just like come in and not take it over, but just be really encouraging and give me suggestions or show me if I, I also felt very um, free to go and ask for help. It's, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of this idea, but I'm not quite sure how to to do this angle or, or get it right and then they would do something I was like oh and then I could take it from there they, they'd have an idea or be able like the scale of Marahute um, to Cody and Rescuers Down Under because I, I boarded the scene where they were at the nest with the eggs and uh, and mm -hmm. I had an idea and, and Glenn got all excited about what I wanted to do with it so he was showing me sort of a scale thing and I, it just sort of I took that and ran it was it was great. That spirit of uh, yeah, it sounds like a great like spirit of collaboration uh, to to and, and fertile ground for growth, which uh, you did. <laughs> Obviously, you, you uh, <laughs> it, it seems that uh, and, and I was going you know doing my research, going through your uh, the timeline and stuff on your uh, Wikipedia and all these types of things, and uh, it seems like uh, you know starting you know as a trainee, I guess basically on, on Mermaid, and then uh, you know getting some some really you know tests with some some great stuff on on Beauty and the Beast uh, by by Lion King, which is only a handful of years later, you're already head of story is that correct yeah. or supervisor yeah. or how what was that uh kind of growth progression like that seems very very well, fast <laughs> rise up through the ranks well um yeah i i had i had uh, sort of proved myself on rescuers done under and then i think kirk and gary on beauty and the beast they were new directors and i was more of a colleague to them than a you know underling and so they really wanted me in the room and i i I really contributed a lot to that film, and then I just felt I. One of the things is I had was a roommate with Roger Allers, who was head of story on um, on uh, Beauty and the Beast, and so um, after Beauty and the Beast, I went into development um, and was working with Hendel B. Toy on um, Fantasia 2000, and it was called Fantasia Continued at that time. It was way before 2000, <laughs> but um, but I was also developing uh, Swan Lake with Mike Gabriel, and I love fairy tales. I love you know trying to find new ways to tell them, and so I thought, boy, you know, I learned a lot from Roger and watched how he worked with the artists on Beauty and the Beast, and so I thought, well, I'm just going to throw my name in the ring, throw my hat in the ring, and so I went to. I think it was Tom Schumacher, and I said, you know, if if you think I'm ready, I feel like I might be ready to supervise one of these stories because they were doing more. They weren't just doing one per year anymore. So 
um, and I was aiming for Swan Lake, but then Swan Princess was announced, and so they canned Swan Lake, and I was like, uh-oh, because Roger had just been asked to do King of the Jungle at the time, and that, that project had been in development hell for years and years and years, and nobody really wanted to work on it, and I was like, no, because I knew, oh, if I'm free, I bet Roger's going to ask for me, and he did. And uh, and I couldn't say no, because if I said no, I'd never get another opportunity. So, but boy, so glad I did. Turned out to be yeah. <laughs> the most amazing career experience ever. It was just an incredible, <laughs> an incredible time. And, and we didn't expect it to do what it did at all. You know, we just had no yeah. idea that it was going to, it was the B movie. Pocahontas was the A movie. <laughs> so... It's so funny how that that, that happens a lot. Yeah. I've heard so many people kind of recount those, like, oh, Kung Fu Panda, who wants to work on that? Like, all these types <laughs> yeah. of times when, like, the thing ends up yeah. being like, ah, you know. But, uh, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's great. It seems like, like uh, kind of along the way, I'm, I'm sensing a theme already of kind of, like, being in the right place at the right time, uh, you know, willingly or unwillingly even <laughs> in some cases, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it's just, just going going really well in that way. Okay, so you stay at Disney. I, I'm going to pick up the pace because you, you have such an incredible long oh, career okay. that we, you were still at the very beginning of it. You, you right? <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's, it's hard to c compress, uh, you know, so, so many projects and stuff into, into such little time. But um, so you're at Disney for, you know, you stay there a while longer through what, uh, Hunchback or, or what was your uh, last film at Disney? Uh, I left during Hunchback. Um, I, I was there for about almost eight years and then uh, went to DreamWorks. And so how did that that come about? Because this is right as DreamWorks Animation was starting, right? This is back the very beginning of DreamWorks, yeah. right? As we know it. Um, and so how did that, uh, was that you know, previous relationships? You already kind of knew those guys or as they were putting that team together or how did, how did that well, come about? Um, because I'd worked pretty closely with Jeffrey on Lion King and he gotten to know me on that. Um, and, he, and he knew me before that as well, but I'd, I'd sort of fought some battles on Lion King. Um, and so I think he... Uh, saw me as someone who could come and help him build the company. So he, he called me early, early on while I was still working on um, Hunchback and wanted me to come over. And so I, I reluctantly, it, it took him a while to talk me into it because he wouldn't tell me what the project was initially. And then when he did, I thought he was crazy <laughs> to, to do a movie with God in it. You know, I was like, uh, uh, but then... But then the more I thought about it, and I was, uh, I was feeling I needed a change. Disney was feeling pretty corporate, and um, they were getting ready to move over to Burbank from the warehouses in Glendale. So while everybody was moving over there, I just went to DreamWorks and uh, and uh, made that shift. And it was it was also another incredible opportunity, you know. So at this point, you you're. Um... Uh, I don't know how many years into your career, but but uh, to to make that leap from I guess you you know, had done some leadership in terms of of uh, the story department, but jumping to directing, uh, what what was what was that like? Like <laughs> putting on that hat, and now now you're you know kind of conducting the whole orchestra in a way. What what was that uh, transition for you? It was uh, really intimidating because it wasn't something that was on my radar. I really went over to DreamWorks to help build the story department over there. And, and I was hoping yeah. to be one of those people who could sort of oversee all the stories and help help shepherd them along. And I think uh, Jeffrey had other plans. He, he'd asked many people to direct Prince of Egypt, who all turned him down because of the same reason I told him he was crazy <laughs> or or other you know, they just had other things going. He asked my husband to direct it before he asked me, but Kevin was already going off to do Tarzan. So, um, so I, I was in a, I, I was sort of the leader cause I was heading up the story and, uh, he'd asked me and I said, no, Jeffrey, I think I'm good. I'm good with just doing, you know, building your story department. And this is, I don't know all the other departments well enough to, to feel like I could run that. And then a couple of weeks later, we were in a meeting, and he asked his producers, Sandy Rabins and Penny Finkelman Cox, it's like, hey, have you, all right, you guys, have you found a director yet? And they said no. And then he looked at me and said, Brenda, you're directing until I find somebody else. And I was like, no. okay. So I was directing for about three or four months um, 
but I, as I was doing it, I realized that everything supports the story. It, you know, everything has to support the story, the acting, the visuals, the effects, everything has to be able. So once I got my head wrapped around that, I was good to go and, and I was starting to enjoy it. And I, I feel like I have a good way with people and, and being able to, to encourage them to bring what they do best, you know, to the table. And so I really enjoyed that. And then, um, Spielberg's um, Amblimation came into the fold and that's when Simon um, Wells and Steve Hickner came into it and uh, I'd known okay. Steve and hadn't met Simon before that was a little we were like okay how's this going to work out but we became the three of us became a really uh, really good friends and really got on the same page so it was a great experience again I was incredibly fortunate you know on, on how that all fell together such a fantastic film in so many ways. It's just the scope of it is so epic, and the the, the score and the the soundtrack. And like I, I just love Prince of Egypt. Um, it, it's it's one of those kind of, uh, you know, like you said, it's take a risk on that that type of project or that type of story. It's not something you see. You'll come out of Hollywood a whole heck of a lot, especially in animation. But um, yeah, it's like put like, there's just the right I guess team at the right time uh, to make something special. And um, yeah, that, that's super cool. You were able to uh, be involved in that. Um, you mentioned before, and we won't go into great detail with it, but it, for those of you who don't know, uh, Brenda's husband is also uh, animation director as well. Uh, I wanted to say though that uh, Goofy movie is one of my favorite uh, favorite movies. Like we literally did like a, a stage play of it in our neighborhood growing up. Like that's how much we love the Goofy movie. So uh, thanks, uh, Kevin, for that one. But um, he also you know directed Tarzan and some other things. And so. That's that's exciting that you know it's all all in the family. Um, so you 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 finished directing uh, Prince of Egypt. Um, what's what's next? What's was the next kind of step uh, in your journey there at, at DreamWorks? Um, well, it was to take some maternity leave because uh, I had ah, my okay. daughter. I was pregnant with my daughter right at the end of Prince of Egypt, and uh, wow, yeah. yeah. So I, I took a couple of years to 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 do that, and then I came back in and. Uh, you know, the company had gotten bigger and it was starting to get a little more uh, executive driven <laughs> again on on different levels. But but yet there were still a lot of people that that I really enjoyed working with there. And um, so I ended up uh, consulting on a few of those projects, trying to develop one of my own. Didn't it didn't quite um, uh it didn't quite go <laughs> and so I ended up leaving again um, and took some time off and worked um, with Eric Goldberg uh, when he took a stint away from Disney on he was trying to direct um, Where the Wild Things Are an animated version under Tom Hanks mm, company yeah. um, in Universal but um, it just seemed like that was so many cooks in the kitchen and, and it was it was really hard it didn't ever fly and then the live action version came out not too long after that so um and then uh, what did i do then <laughs> joe ramft gave me a call oh I, I actually did a little stint at sony um tried to get a couple of projects off the ground there with one with roger allers he'd moved over there and then he got pulled into open season with jill and uh i got pulled up to pixar so so yeah i guess it's worth mentioning that at some point during you know, obviously back always as, as you were, you know, probably around Lion King or whatever is when, uh, CG kind of emerged and became, you know, a, a, a you know, contender and equal player. Obviously you went to DreamWorks as they were still doing their, their 2D films, but, um, now you have this kind of other thing that's coming up alongside it. Uh, you know, that's the same and different and, you know, in a lot of ways, but, but, you know, certainly, uh, caused some, some, I'm sure some, some rifts or some anxiety or whatever in terms of like the, the old guys, uh, the old heads, uh, traditional animators, right. Versus the ones who were either being retooled or, or kind of, uh, you know, in some, some cases, uh, put out to pasture and, and, you know, for lack of a better phrase, um, it was, was there a sense, uh, as, as you're kind of working on these different projects and trying to get some of these things developed, um, of, of what that shift was like, was there a time when you kind of knew that like 3d films are, are sort of you know, the, the thing now, or, or that the Hollywood was moving that way. Uh, does that affect, I guess, the story department or directors as much the, the sense of that? Um, story, not so much other than, you know, we eventually went to the Cintiq and didn't, but they, they were yeah. still 
drawn those on pieces of paper and pinning them up on boards while the animators were trying to figure out how to, you know, move those splines or whatever, they, you know, those, those things. Uh, and it was harder for some than others. Um, and I know uh, uh, it's, it's kind of sad that a lot, of, a lot of that knowledge is being kind of lost, but some people are trying really hard to, to keep it alive. So I, I applaud them. Yeah. But, you know, to me, it's like it just broadened the scope of the stories um, you could tell as far as what you could do with the camera and, and that kind of thing. It, it did open up a lot of uh, things that, that were harder to do in, in traditional. But um, yeah, I, I was aware and, uh, but I just, again, I, I was focused more on story. So Joe calls you, uh, you, you find your way up to Pixar. Um, were, were you, was the bear and the bow a story you kind of already had with you or were developing? Is that something that, that you sort of brought there or is that something that, that, uh, did that kind of come come about after you'd spent some it, time it up here? It came about after I'd spent some time up there. I mean, Joe had called me to come and try to help with the female characters on Cars, um, and uh, that was a little. It was a little late for that. <laughs> By the time I got there, nobody nobody was really interested, <laughs> other than Joe. So uh, then I, you know, I worked on Cars for a while, and um, um, and then. I was asked by a couple of people uh, to, you know, maybe come up with some ideas of, you know, projects I'd like to, to direct. And so, um, the thing for me was, um, my daughter was like four when we moved up there, and she was very challenging as far as just being a little firecracker and always pushing back and all of that. And we would just be in these constant battles and getting ready so I could get to work on time and I could get her to preschool and, and all of that. And by the time I got to work, I was so stressed out and I realized I have to channel this somehow. And, you know, I just felt like, what's she going to be like as a teenager? And that's pretty much how Merida was born. I just started thinking about, okay, I need, we need a mother daughter story and we need, we need to figure this one out. So, uh, and I, like I said earlier, I love fairy tales, and so it, it just started all coming together. And uh, but I think Pixar. I mean, John, John really liked the idea when I pitched it to him. He sort of cornered me at lunch one day, and I wasn't expecting to have to pitch it. So I was like, "Here it is," you know, <laughs> not really well thought out, but um, an early, early, early version of it. Um, when actually the boys. The triplets, I had the triplets, but they turned into birds instead of bears, you know, it was a whole different <laughs> uh, approach in the beginning, and then it, we honed it in, but uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, early on at Pixar that I came up with it. That's awesome that you were, you were able to bring so much of your own kind of uh, personal um, influences into that, right? You're Scottish, of course, uh, and bringing your, your daughter's inspiration in for a character and then seeing that, uh, you know, kind of come to fruition is, 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 you know, probably different in a lot of ways than, than uh, directing, you know, a, a Prince of Egypt yeah. where, you know, you've got a 6,000 year old story, yeah, however, old, right? and you're just yeah. kind of <laughs> adapting, right? Uh, Okay, so uh, you you direct that film that that goes on, you know, even to to win an Oscar. Um, we 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 all sort of know the the story of that. Um, that that I, I think in in a lot of ways. Cause, so my wife, uh, I remember going to see that with with her and another group of people when we were living up in New York, and she's not really into animation in that way. But um, I remember it resonated so much with her that that kind of the truth of that mother daughter dynamic uh, was just a story that that we hadn't really seen uh, explored in a lot of ways. And so I think it was it was it was really special in that way. And and fighting to make a film that that you know, like you say, on first pitch may or may not uh, excite you know sort of the the boys club or whatever. Um, it was. Just a, a incredible and, and needed uh, risk, I guess. If you can, if, I don't know why we just have to call it that, but you know. Um, and, and I think it w was needed and well received, right? Um, you know, Academy Award. I can't. You, you can. You can do worse than that. <laughs> um, and you, you were, you know, the first woman to win an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, right? Is that yeah. correct? Um, so that you know, that's 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 special. Even if you know there were some obviously some some bittersweet uh, uh, sort of uh, happenings that we won't go into all the details, right? But um, 
Uh, thank you for, for, like I say, putting something like that on, on the screen because I think it was special and powerful, uh, I'll say. No, I just have to get a, give a shout out to Vicki Jensen because she worked, she was one of the directors on Shrek um, and, it, and it won the first Academy Award, but they didn't give the Oscars to the directors. Oh, yeah. To the producers. So, yeah. So. Oh, okay. So yeah. I good. just have to give a shout out to Vicki <laughs> on that one. That's fair. And thank you. No, that, that, yeah, I, I didn't even know that. So that, that's good to know. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. But uh, no, again, thank you for, for, for that film. I, I think it's, it's, it's beautiful and, and a, a, a special, again, kind of kind of moment in the industry uh, in a lot of ways. Um, so you, you find your, you know, your, your way, um, you know, sort of part ways, I guess, at the, towards the end of that film. Um, what is your next uh, career step? What, what, where did that, what was your next part of the journey? Where, where does that lead you? Well, uh, I I was headed back to DreamWorks, but I got sidetracked by Kathleen Kennedy. She wanted me to um, help out on a film that um, uh, that she was she was at Lucasfilm and George had been work putting together, and it was a bit of a mess <laughs> at the time. And um, but uh, ended up being Strange Magic. So I went and I consulted on that for a while. Yeah. Um, worked with Gary Rydstrom tried to help them get that on track. And then, then I went back to DreamWorks and uh, uh, worked with Jeffrey again. And I was developing a couple of ideas and also helping out on a couple of others. Um, but then uh, there was this great, it was this great story called Rumblewick. It was based on these children's books, uh, Welsh children's books about, uh, about a witch uh, who didn't want to be a witch, and her familiar, which was a cat, was desperately trying to get her to be a witch again, and it it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, but then PDA, I got shut down, and so, which is heartbreaking. And then we went. Then I was flying down to LA and working down there and back and forth. And uh, then, and then we found out Jeffrey was trying to sell the studio, and he was shutting down projects right and left. And so, so. Everything that I was working on and trying to get going just went away, and so I, I ended up leaving there again because uh, um, it was just it was not fun <laughs> at that point. So, yeah, um, yeah. but you know what? I it was still it was so much fun working on that stuff and g getting to reconnect with old not only DreamWorks people but uh, Disney people I'd work with like Ed Gombert. Um, Gary Trousdale, um, Craig Grasso was working on it for a while. Kevin Harkey was doing a lot on it. It was it was an incredible group. Um, and then I was uh, asked to uh, write a script on a, a, a ch about a Chinese folktale. A, a Chinese um, producer approached me, and I started working on a Chinese uh, story, and uh, was loving that. It was about twin sisters and. Uh, I did that, and then they wanted me to direct it, and so we were. I put together this tight little team, and we were putting reels together, and it was going really good. And then, as most of the Chinese projects back in mid-teens, they it just went away. The the and and uh, the way the politics between the two countries were going, it was so that was heartbreaking because I put about almost three years into that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Uh, and then uh, took a break for a while, uh, and then I got asked to do uh, "Come Away," my first live action film. Yeah, live action. Yeah, I I, I wasn't even that familiar with that project. I, again, as I was going through your Wikipedia, I saw that and I'm like, oh, that that's that's interesting. So so well, after so many years working in animation and all different uh, you know sides of it, and really understanding that that ecosystem, that world, what what was that like to to then be developing a a, a film, you know, directing a, a film in live action? Was that like such, again it, another big culture shock? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was a little. It was a little crazy, and it didn't turn out very well. Um, I I wasn't. Uh, I think I was still reeling from the whole. Uh, losing the the Chinese project and and um, you know we were all owed money by the end of it so I was still reeling from that a little bit and but uh, so I went into this thinking as on Prince of Egypt when I was a new director that 
I'd have a team that would support me and, and go through, and then I realized I didn't vet my the people who approached me very well, and it didn't turn out to be the greatest experience. But that said, I worked with some amazing actors and some amazing crew members and, and people, and I learned so much. Um, so if I ever did live action again, I know what I wouldn't do as much as I know what I would do. <laughs> um, but it, okay, it yeah. was, it was a tough experience. And, um, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not that happy with the end product, but I'm not, I'm still proud of it, but in, a, in, in some aspects of it, but uh, it was a tough time, but it was a, you know, you got to go through those to have, to learn to, you know, to grow. You've got it. You got to yeah. have those bumps in the yeah. road. So. No, well said. Um, so is it the type of thing that made you made you want to uh, did that kind of like make you run back to animation a little bit in yeah. a way? Or were you kind of like, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with this world? Or, or yeah. are you kind of excited to still explore in that, uh, that sandbox as um, well? I just made me appreciate animation a lot more because, you know, not only I yeah. find the people in animation to be just a different breed of people and, and just friendlier and, and more open and there's less less mm -hmm. fear. <laughs> I didn't remember so much fear and everyone was terrified making that film. So I was like, mm -hmm. including myself, you know, so it's like, what is going on? But, but I think the thing for me though, is the process of animation. I just enjoy more. I enjoy figuring out the story and storyboards. I enjoy that, mm -hmm. that continual ex exploration, being able to see it. Oh, that's not working here. Let's, you know, and just that collaboration of, of how animation works and pre-editing the movie, unlike in, anim in live action where, hope we got it all, hope we got everything we need and you know come away being an independent film. We did not have the budget to do any reshoots. So it was like, ah, you know, <laughs> trying to put stuff together and wishing we had things that weren't there. And so I just, <laughs> I just like animation so much better. So I'll probably stick with animation. Okay, so that that brings us mostly uh, fairly current, right? Or that how, what what year was come come away? That was uh, uh, it was released. Those would have been the teen still or uh, okay. It was uh, it premiered at Sundance, and then the pandemic hit, and so I took a much yeah. needed break <laughs> to okay, to good. just chill and do a lot of reading and relaxing and and you know watching as the world sort of went a little crazy and. Um, but yeah. just sort of stayed out of it. Uh, and I, I felt fortunate that I was, I had the luxury to be able to do that, you know, having um, worked so hard <laughs> and, uh, and all of that. But um, so I, I started writing a lot. And um, so I'm doing a lot more writing. I'm uh, working on a stage play. I'm working on um, mm. uh, another, uh, animated project uh, with the possibility of that that Chinese project possibly coming back to life so that would be great um, um, I'm also writing I've been trying to write a novel but you know what I really miss the collaboration of story and animation being a writer mm. I don't know my, it's like it's so lonely and <laughs> it's like I can't go hey yeah. what do you think does this drawing read you know? it's like oh no I guess yeah, that's so, true. <laughs> so, uh, doing all of that, and I'm I'm also writing a memoir. So I've I've just got a bunch of projects that I'm, I'm yeah, slowly moving forward, you know, hurting. <laughs> you know. That that's exciting, and it's like you say, it's nice to to you know to have the 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 luxury of 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 uh, time, you know, to slow down and to just kind of focus on some different things, and and kind of like you say, sort to see what what uh gets off the ground uh is is exciting yeah. um so are you developing some of those projects uh with kevin i know you guys have a, a production like your own uh, production company is yeah that... yeah well, well we were yeah that's one big part that i didn't talk about was yeah we were developing some films um pre-pandemic while i was doing post on come away okay. and um he was carrying the lion's share of that but we had several projects going there's they're all on hold right now because of the strike and so I'm not sure what's going to happen yeah. with all of those at this point, but there are about, there are three or four that had found homes um, as far as studios uh, looking to, to develop them. So, so we'll see how that turns out.
Yeah, yeah. There's there's so many question marks in the, the whole industry right now. It was obviously, it's in flux, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> but that's that's exciting. Like to to have so many you know potential seeds out there and then see what what right. sprouts and grows. Um, I, I'm I'm particularly excited about this stage play you mentioned. I, I have a, a kind of a theater background, oh, and I, okay. I love yeah, the theater. Uh, it's exciting and, and it's you know different in so many ways, but also you know storytelling is story. Yeah, and so, it's uh, it's another one where I'm going in. I've never done it before, but this time I know the people around me are going to. <laughs> you know be helpful and and not not uh not be unhelpful i'll put it that way <laughs> well that's that's uh such such a great kind of like uh takeaway theme i'm hearing you know throughout a lot of a lot of what we discussed today is like the the team makes so much of, of the difference yeah. right uh and you you know you've had incredible highs and, and it sounds like some lows as well during your career but um the 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 moments where you kind of lit up the most at least is, is about you know those teams that were just really collaborative and helpful and, and everyone just kind of coming together to make something special yeah. and pour their you know their hearts into something which is which is awesome yeah. uh Cool. Uh, so I, I like to sometimes just get into some, some sort of hypotheticals towards the end. Just, to, you know, uh, thank you for taking us, you know, through your, your whole journey, which has just been incredible. And, and so uh, there's so many just like bright spots of like fortuitous timing uh, throughout <laughs> your, your your journey so far. And we're excited, obviously, to see what you continue to, to, to bring. You've given so much to this industry and we're excited to kind of see where we see Brenda Chaffron's name pop up next. But um in terms of just some some kind of like fun hypothetical questions, had you not um, you know found your way into this sort of filmmaking uh, entertainment industry, um, what else do you think would would have you know in an alternate universe, what what other types of things could you have seen yourself doing with with life? Oh, I I often wonder uh, about music. Um, I was very much mm. I played piano. I sang. Um, uh, I don't know that I would have been some big pop star, no. <laughs> but I, but I just wonder. I often think I think music might have been my other avenue. Create. I think you actually got an opportunity to to sing uh, on the Prince yeah. of Egypt uh, in the in the I film, did. right? That's you and the <laughs> the reprise, right? I, did. <laughs> I saw that yeah. credit. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I think. Just as kind of like a, a question of, of, you know, if somebody's hearing your story and they're, they're, they're inspired by it and they're trying to figure out, okay, well, how, how does one know um, kind of when they're ready to transition to leadership? You find yourself in these roles and, you know, sometimes you're, you know, sometimes there's a little trepidation even when somebody taps you and says, hey, it's you. Uh, what, what, what would you say to somebody who's kind of un, unsure of, of, you know, if they're ready to kind of take on that, that next step into sort of like a leadership position? Um, well, I, I, I would say you know does it excite you does it you know is it or do you just like uh no no don't want that it, listen to your gut you know what what sounds right but um as i've mentioned before really consider who's asking you and and if you feel like they're going to help you um be the best that you can be be the best leader uh, that you can, if you know, if you feel like you're going to have the support to do that job, you know, then yeah, go for it. If if it if you think you have it, but but I would also say if it doesn't feel right, you know, in your gut, then you know maybe maybe that's not the right one or the right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That's that's really good. Uh, w w would you say you have a a favorite thing about leading a team? Like, is there you know what what part kind of excites you the most or, or kind of uh, energizes you uh, most about leading a team? Um, I th I think it's when people feel comfortable bringing themselves to the table. I, I've I've watched over the years when I was, um, you know, just in the ranks with the, uh, being a story artist, and then the trenches with everyone. You know, when people were afraid to put out their ideas, they're afraid to bring forward, afraid they get shut down or, or, or just ridiculed or whatever. I, I, what, it, what makes me happy is making people feel comfortable and safe, giving them a safe environment, and then watching what they bring to the table and how exciting that is and have them feel like they have some ownership to the film that they're working on you know it's like yeah i did that i brought that to the table i you know and 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 also just helping people do their jobs better and making them feel i i still remember lorna cook uh 
It's one of my favorite moments because she's a brilliant artist. She animated. I mean, she she was one of the few women in the industry before me that that I looked up to. She did all this incre incredible animation for Bluth, and then she came to Disney. Um, but she was, I think, she was wanting to get into story, and so I invited her into story on Lion King. And uh, she was nervous like me in the beginning, and she was drawing very tight, you know, and and sharpening her pencil and getting everything in. So I remember taking her sharp, uh, her Prismacolor sharpened pencil away and giving her a china marker, um, a grease pencil. And I said, don't sharpen it and draw and just loosen up. And she just went, she just uh, flourished and just, then she was doing this incredible work. So when I can, when I can just sort of guide someone and then they they do they do it themselves. I didn't do anything. I just gave her a different pencil, you know. But that kind of stuff just yeah. uh, that makes me feel really good. So that's awesome. And yeah, it sounds like you have a gift for unlocking that potential in people. Or you know, first you have to identify it, I guess, and then then uh, kind of set them free to to be their own best selves. Uh, and that's that's uh, really inspiring as well. Um, what? You know, obviously, like we mentioned, things are in flux with all these strikes and, and stuff going on. And um, we, 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 you know, I'll pray for a speedy resolve that's, that's fair yeah. uh, to all of that so we can keep everybody working and get in, and get get things moving again. Um, but what would you say, I guess, or, or is your, I guess, hope for the, the future of the industry? Are there are there um, things you hope will, will change in, in, you know, significant ways or, you know, may, maybe other types of stories you'd like to see told, other voices you'd like to, to hear more of? Um, do you have just kind of any musings as it, as it pertains to that? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'd love to see more women uh, storytellers, absolutely, yeah. and, and, of course, more diversity in all the stories. Um, but I just like I just like to see more heartfelt stories out there. I mean, I, I, I love a good marvel movie as much as anyone and it's it's fun but um i'm also finding and even in animation it just seems so many of the stories are just so frenetic you know and it's just constant and they're trying to cram everything in there you know all the formulaic stuff a lot of times and and i know it's not the the artist's fault i know it's the studio just saying hey do this we want this tick these boxes off and i just really like to see the freedom to be able to just do it honest, you know, heartfelt story. And yeah, I can have lots of action and make you crazy and, you know, but have some resting spaces where you can really feel the heart and the emotion and don't rush through it, you know, to get to the next action, fun, you know, snappy dialogue scene. I just, I really miss, um, I love snappy dialogue, but I don't want it through the whole film. <laughs> I'd like, I'd like to just have yeah, some real yeah. moments, you know, and, and, uh, so I, I guess that would be my, my hope is just to get back to, uh, genuine storytelling of, of, of heart. I mean, and, I, and it's there. <laughs> it's just, it's just sometimes hard to find. I mean, I love turning red. I, I, I thought that was, I thought I really it made my heart glad to see a story like that make it onto screen. I was really surprised <laughs> that it made it up there. <laughs> um, and, and, and to your point, you know, female directors, yeah. uh, you know, that, that's, yeah, you like know, the, so you get the more, the more voices you open the, the table to, the more types of different exactly. stories you, you tend to get. Exactly. And I, I think there's room for that Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, that's interesting. Cause, because um, yeah, I, I completely agree with the, the, um, you know, not, I'm being afraid to just have, tell a story that's a smaller, simpler, slower story. And you mentioned, you know, the stage play. And when you think about theater, I mean, a lot of times you see a play and it's it's just so different than, than the, you know, kind of in-your-face Marvel type thing. If you're watching Death of a Salesman yeah. or something. But it's, it's still captivating and the, the characters are still rich. And, and, and uh, yeah, everything doesn't yeah. kind of have to be a, a mile a minute always. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, taking more more risk in that way. Again, that, that word risk, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood loves it. But uh, yeah, kind of exploring more of those types of stories. I think there's plenty of room for that. So that's well said. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, 
So let's see. Uh, I think we, we hit we hit a lot of a lot of great things, and and again, I'm just just so grateful for your time. You're just uh, such, such a uh, a light and a wealth of of, of wisdom and and uh, just knowledge and experience. And, and so it's, uh, I, I always tell my guests, uh, you know, to you viewers out there, um, that these things are just as much for me as they are for you. I, I enjoy just just getting to, to pick the brains of these these titans of our industry, and and uh, we're, we're grateful uh, to you for your time. Um, I guess in closing, are, are there any just kind of final uh, thoughts or, or uh, you know, pieces of, of inspiration you'd like to leave to, to, to the viewers out there? Anyone who's just, you know, maybe just starting out and, and you know, you're, you're well into your career at this point, hopefully still plenty left, but uh, if you'd like, uh, but, uh, you know, you certainly earned any rest that you're, you're interested in taking at this point. But um, yeah, just in any final words uh, that you'd like to, to bless us with? Uh, yeah. Uh, I would just say, you know, I know the industry is much more competitive. There are many, many more people going for the same job so um, just just don't give up you know just keep keep believing in yourself and if one avenue doesn't work you know find that other avenue that that might get you around get you back to the same place but in a in a different in a different way um, but just believe in your talent and don't stop growing I, I would say you know, look at your work and, and don't fall in love with it so much that you stagnate, but, but learn from mistakes and keep growing. Is, uh, it's a huge thing. It's, it's something I was always afraid of the mistakes, and now um, I kind of appreciate them and, and, and like to figure out, okay, I don't want to do that again, so how do I do this better next time? So. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's uh, incredibly well said. That, that's wise. Um, you know, it, 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 like you say, it, it, those, that's the type of thing that can only be said from, you know, looking back on, on a, a career that's, you know, as long and uh, illustrious as yours. And um, again, Brenda, we just thank you so much for your time. Thanks for stopping by. It's been an absolute joy, a pleasure. Um, thanks all of you for tuning in. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. We've got many more episodes coming. Uh, we're going to keep them, keep trying to inspire you guys and just keep uh, having great conversations with, with great people. Uh, so again, thank you all for your time and uh, we'll see you here next time on CG Riff. Bye.